All right, guys, it's uh, me, Kevin Drury, uh, DM on Masters of the Box. I've also helped uh, writing the module and uh, getting everybody together. So it is, and that has been quite a ride so far. Uh, how long have I been playing D&D? That goes way back. I started playing D&D towards the end of middle school. So I was in probably about 14, 15. Give you a frame of reference, I'm 36 now. Uh, that was, so that was uh, second edition AD&D. Uh, so that was me and the friends on the weekend. We used to, heck, we used to play on the phone. We would call each other and we would, we would tie up each other's phones for hours on end if we couldn't play any other way. And we would take turns running. And at that time, I hadn't really developed a preference for running, running games. That happened much later. Uh, oddly enough, uh, when I just had my wife and two of our neighbors to run for, I developed a campaign setting that I've been running games with. I developed that in 2002, and I kept running games in that setting all the way until uh, last year. My last campaign ended in December of 2017 that ran three solid years. I ran several other campaigns that ran two, two to three years in that world, and I've just recently started developing a new one. Difference between DMing a regular campaign and doing a show like Masters of the Box? Well, for one thing, when you're, regular, when you're DMing a regular game, you don't have to worry about an effects budget. So if a giant dragon wants to swoop down from the sky, set everybody on fire, only to be uh, harpooned by a spear from the heavens with that sense of rainbows of light in every direction, we can do that. Uh, here, uh, if things get a little bit bigger than an average individual, uh, you know, budgets start, you know, <laughs> being a major issue. So that's number one. Second of all is what's good to watch. What may be f enjoyable for a bunch of people sitting around the table to hear or experience is a lot different than uh, what might be fun to, to watch from the outside. Uh, you know, political intrigue might be great for to go hours on end on the tabletop, but it would make for very poor viewing. There's actually, the only, I tend to avoid the rest of them just so I don't unduly let them influence what I'm doing here, but there is a uh, British gentleman that he does a lot of how-to, like how to be a great DM, how to great, how to be a, a, uh, a good player, or you know signs that you might be a bad player, or how to make things interesting. Happy to find out I'm doing a lot of that, lot of that stuff already, but for somebody new, um, and hopefully maybe we can find a link to put in the description here, but he does, he has excellent advice and things I wish I learned early, much earlier on in my career because a lot of that stuff I still do and some of the stuff I had to learn the hard way that I was doing them. The auditions honestly had a lot of trepidation um, because a lot of times in order to get a lot of cohesion, you know, it can be one thing to be a great actor or be a great player, but d and is not about individuals, it's about the group and finding not only people that could play or act or voice because I mean acting is honestly the small one of the smallest part of this for the gaming table uh, it's people that could work together and which is why we ran several sessions before and honestly I was surprised that honestly they weren't even that necessary because these this group we got they just started meshing immediately and uh, that's what that was my biggest concern the other part was where, where enough people going to show up and we had to turn more than a few people away I was surprised because I they started working together in ways I've had groups that work together, been together for a year or more that didn't mesh that well together. Um, or or uh, you know Jason and Eddie are pretty too good, kind of stoic, serious, uh, and in their ways kind of arrogant bookends. Um, and then you have. Um, you know, you have got, you've got Jin and Afa. They're kind of your, your more serious straight men. Less so with Jin. And then you've got uh, Blagdor, who in the center just uh, very impatient, but you know, jump, move to action. He's that. He, you you need that. You need a good mix of characters, and we have that because again, Blagdor is not going to let things just sit. If things start getting slow, he's going to move them along. If a situation calls for seriousness, you have those in, in three of the characters. You have your comic relief and that the same thing, the, the group dynamic also works the same way in combat. You've got your healer, you've got your range support, you've got your melee. They, they hit on all cylinders and every part of it and uh, I'm really interested to see not only how 
how far this can go from a show perspective and how hard I can push them as a DM because they've already overcome, as you'll see, some pretty tough encounters by working well together. Yeah, episode one, honestly, I was a little concerned because, you know, people think D&D, &D, they want to see the fighting and this and that, but the, uh, it's been a little bit since we filmed it, and honestly, we did so much at once that I kind of forgot some of the interactions that happened, and I just watched it, some of it recently, and there's some pure comedy gold in there, and just reiterating how well these people work together. And like, there's, there's, there's comments that could have fallen flat, but because somebody picked him up, you know, he gets either or anything ranging from a chuckle to a full belly laugh. You can tell I'm nervous, so besides not being able to maybe say a couple of words, uh, my stutter, which I've struggled with for years, comes in full force, um, and I don't know, seem to know where to look, and that sometimes I'm very fascinated with the buttons on the front of my shirt, but as things go forward, I will, uh, I'll work on that if, uh, or I'll have somebody on set to, you know, beat it out of me, but one way or another, I, I look forward to, <laughs> to, to working on that. Well, the Green Dragon, I can proudly say, got involved because uh, I brought them to the producer's attention and I've been going there for a while and they have been always been an amazing place to go relax have some new and interesting beverages they started brewing their own and the food's been fantastic great great decor and great people and it came with its own dwarf uh, the actor playing Black Door is a local there and uh, the first time I met I saw him he was in full regalia um, he, he even goes by the name Gimli there. He has the, the, when the mug that was in there was his own mug. He pretty much has a set place there, and if you go there on the weekend, you got about a 30% of chance running into him. <laughs> With the people we have working on this, I think we can do some great things. Especially if we happen to get a little bit of the, you know, FX budget, and we're not, you know, reduced to humans or human-like monsters. And uh, I've got, we're, we're got some great, some great stuff planned for the story. I like to see that play out because, as I mentioned, my campaigns tend to run years, and I like to finish things. So uh, I think there's a lot of great surprises in store, both visually and in the story.